Hey, it's Nardwar, the human serviette in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, at Beat Street Records, waiting for Ed Sheeran. Hey, Ed, it's Nardwar. Hey, how you doing? How are you? Beat Street Records. Hey, long time no see, man. Avi, who owns a shop. What's going on? Hey, Ed, welcome to Beat Street. How are you? And, and Avi, believe it or not, knows somebody that you know, Ed. Yeah. Apparently, your neighbor was here. Not that long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, under what circumstances? What was he looking for? Oh, he came in uh, looking for all kinds of stuff. I think he had a record player in his hotel room, and they told him to come here. Yeah, he found. He's got, yeah, uh, he's got a very impressive vinyl collection. Have you have you been? Good, good. Are you looking for anything yet? Like we're here at a record store at Beat Street Records. Are you looking for anything in particular? Uh, you know, I'm I'm open to to anything. I've kind of got. I, I'm the same as Elton. I collect vinyl, but um, but I'm open to all the, um, you know left of center stuff that you've got well i was wondering is it okay avi if we go upstairs we show eddie upstairs absolutely you want to go upstairs ed yeah right. do you live in vancouver then yes vancouver british columbia canada i think the last time we talked i was on to his sniper patrol <laughs> 2012 2012 yeah. like it's been 11 years mad Amazing. And I've, Beast still got, I've still got those vinyls, you know, that you got me. Oh, thank you for, not, thank you for not throwing them out. Uh, <laughs> and I got actually a big fun from you, Avi, didn't I? Yeah, that's true, yeah. A lot of the records that I get from interviews are from Beat Street. So, yeah, Beat Street is where I get a lot of the records. I'm so happy you still have them. And I'm so happy, Avi, thank you for shutting down the store. We shut down the store for you, Ed. Oh, lovely. Yeah, Do you yeah. get many stores shut down for you? Uh, no, I don't. I don't really go out a lot, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a recluse now, especially with kids. I'm just, I've, I've just been in the hotel room with them all day. Now on stage, it circles like there's a circle stage. Do you ever get seasick on stage? No, but when I played with uh, Eminem, I tried to get him to get on the revolve, and I think, I think it was a bit too much. Because I've, I've, I've been playing on it for like a hundred shows now, so I'm sort of used to it, but it's, uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely different for people. And right here, we have the backstage of Beat Street. Could you explain, please, Avi? Absolutely. This is our little big collection here. room up here where we keep all our fun uh, collectibles and memorabilia. We continue on here with something that you absolutely love, Lego. Is it Lego? Yeah, Lego. Is it? Yeah, look, Mac Miller, and this oh, is a amazing. gift for you, wow. Ed. A Mac Miller amazing. Lego. Could you explain a little bit about the Lego, Alvi? This is a guy called Canvas Don who makes um, unofficial Lego products. So, uh, and they make oh, them man. all with wow. the current wrappers. Yeah, these are amazing. And that's for you. Thank you so much. That's so sweet, man. Because you, you actually visited the Lego warehouse, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I had a really memorable night with Mac in, in Pittsburgh, actually. He took me out to a pool hall, and we got sharks by a uh, pool shark. But, yeah, thank you, man. This is so sweet. Obvious, so much stuff here. Bruce Lee stuff. Oh. Yeah, you like Bruce Lee? Do you know what? I have Enter the Dragon on my list of film. I have, like, one of those scratch posters of, like, movies to watch, and I still haven't... So, oh, VHS, come on. I actually I, I have a VHS uh, player, but I, I still haven't seen it. Yeah, still haven't seen it. Right there. Amazing, thank you. And yeah. Check out all these dolls that Avi has. Cool. Have you got any of these at home? Um, I have access through Avi at B Street Records <laughs> and a whole bunch of game of Basque, oh, the Space Jam. Yeah, yeah. It's a good film. <laughs> and right around the corner here, we have... Welcome to the magazine room over cool. here. So we have... Uh, of this is uh, this is this is the magazine in England Q. Um, do you have you, you have Q here? Yeah, um, no, Ish. no, not as much. But look at the Eminem collection he has. Go. Cool. And you had him on stage. How hard is it to get Eminem on stage? Uh, it was pretty difficult. Yeah, I I did. I went over to play uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with him, and uh, he was like, because I I basically flown off on a day off of shoot. I was shooting fourteen music videos back to back, and I had one day off in between. Fourteen. Yeah, and I had one day off in between, and that was the day that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So I got on a plane that night, flew, played, got on a plane that night, and then flew back. And he found out that I'd done that, and was just like, "Anything you ever need." And I just said then and then, I was, I was like, "I'm coming to play Detroit." So that. So were you worried that he wouldn't show up? Part I, I sort of gave him the. When did he show up? Like you began the gig and like, hey Ed, Eminem is here. <laughs> no, we did, we did, we did sound check. I was there for a couple of days as well. He let me use his studio to record some stuff in, so I sort of knew it was gonna happen. But uh, yeah, I think I gave him the out. That whenever I do perform with people, I always say you can cancel last minute if you want. So you know, there's never any pressure. 
And right around here, some more mags, including Eco Trip, and this is another gift for you, Thank Gangstar you. from '97 on the cover of Eco Trip. Incredible, yeah, yeah. I got to, uh, I got to know uh, DJ Premier actually. He's, he's the best. And have, you, have you interviewed him yet? Yes, I have. And right along here, I'll be some more mags, right? Yeah, we got Old Source, we got Original Bomb magazines, we even have some UK magazines. Hey! I don't know if that's your era or not. I don't think I ever had juice, no. Yeah, and we what year was that, 2002? Yeah, there's some other Big Daddy wow. and uh, Grand Slam, other UK mags. Incredible. Thanks, man. And Vibe magazine, the collection he has here, and you're the first British person on the cover of Vibe? Oh yeah, yeah, I totally forgot that. Yeah, it was uh, me, Matt Wilds and August Alsina. Yeah. God, I totally forgot that. They had they had all of us in, in balaclavas and I, I, I found it so uh, kind of random to be on a cover in a balaclava, but yeah. This is great. Well, we have to know that because you're Ed Sheeran. <laughs> in it. And we're here at Beat Street Records. Have we a bit more of the collectible room, if we could see. I love I love Funko I, uh, Funko Pops were my. What are you looking for? I don't know. It was my COVID collection thing. Have you got every Funko that there is? No, there's so many Funkos, but uh, I, I keep the ones that I like generally. I've got a small Funko collection in the other room here. If you want to step into the other room. Amazing. Avi, what do we have here? Uh, Snoop Doggy Dog. I love Snoop Doggy Dog. But he gave you a chain? He did give me a chain. And I, I don't really smoke anymore. And I was in the dressing room with him. And he'd invited Russell Crowe as well. And I think they both love smoking weed together. And I was like, I know if I do, my night's over. So I had like a long conversation first. And then I was like, fuck it, when in Rome. And uh, I couldn't see. <laughs> Yeah, it was. <laughs> and then he signed you to Death Row. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you signed to Death Row Records? No, but I do have a Death Row chain. Yeah, yeah, I do have a Death Row chain. I have it in my. Um... I thought you were signed. No, no, no. I'm actually, I'm actually currently unsigned at the moment. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm. So I'm... he could sign you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> technically, yeah, he could. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, this record I'm putting out is my first. Um, release on my own label. And I'm so excited to hear to be at Beat Street Records. I'd love, to, I'd love to come to your house to see what you're... I bet you've got an insane collection. Well, this is a me. I could check at... Uh, Avi, could you please give a little example here? Absolutely. we got our Trap Toys collection here. Shout out Tony Trap and his, in, in the Trap Boys. Uh, we got uh, Super 7s and Hip Hop Toys. Uh, RYCA Toys. We've got our Breakdance Toys. Um, I've, I've never seen anything like this. It's amazing. Yeah. And right behind you? We've got our wall of doom over here. Big doom fans. Um, Some biggie stuff? A whole bunch biggie, of biggie. Yeah. Amazing match, yeah. Look at this biggie here. That's, that's great. <laughs> is that for sale? That's not for sale, no. That's, uh, <laughs> Nothing up here is for sale. This is all uh, my personal collection. Um, what's, what's your favorite thing in your collection? Wow. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite thing. These are great. Thing. These are great. Um, I love the De La Soul stuff. Is it, uh, so how like how difficult is that to find? They vary. Some of them are currently available and you can get them anywhere. Others are original promo items. I started with promo items, so some stuff is quite hard. No to one get. really yeah. does that for promo. I, I, obviously, like you got Tyler, but I haven't really seen action figures as. Well, what right up there, British Destiny's Child and Spice Girl. Go. Cool. I remember the Spice Dolls because yeah. that was like when I was in primary school. And Brandy. <laughs> Amazing. And over here, Spider-Man. This is also a Trap Toys classic, Spider-Man Dem, which is the British uh, <laughs> version there. Thrip, thrip, <laughs> Man's on a big ting. <laughs> That's great. Who brought that out? Uh, trap Toys. Brilliant. Yeah. Amazing. I love that Britain's getting yeah. some representation. Oh, well, it doesn't stop there. Look, we also have the Boy George doll. <laughs> As, as you would need, yeah. Over here, we got Madonna and Cher, Cindy Lauper. I find the, the, the music Funkos are more difficult to find. These, these look great. They've just done my second one. I was really buzzed about it. That's right. Yeah, we've ordered those. And I think they come out when? Next year? I don't know. I year? didn't even know they were happening. Oh, they just, really? yeah, I go. just suddenly, right. yeah, yeah. I think someone, I think I had a kid and someone approved it at the time. I did have this as a kid, though. Yeah. That one, yeah. And what about the Eminem urinal mat? Uh, for, for the man who has everything. <laughs> a promotional item. Should I be touching that's, that? That's a Have crazy you? promotional item. Is that clean? Nobody is pissed on it. We're all right, right, okay, okay. okay. But, uh, we kept it clean. And but, what was uh, that? Is that concert? Oh, no. Wow. Back when music videos were on VHS. Brilliant. 
And we also have some different Funkos here, like new Funkos. So this is the original early Funko, where before they went to the uh, smaller size Funkos. And then this is a more current one, where they've done this gold series of, uh, of ones. And that's the original Tupac. Right mate. So what? So do you just let mates up here to come and see it, or is this purely for mates and friends? Yeah, Ed, it's we well, let Ed up you. here. Yeah, it. thank you, Avi, for letting us backstage here. Yeah. So I started uh, collecting cassettes in in COVID as well. I found my old cassette collection. Yeah. So this is this is pretty pretty cool to see. Are these like demo tapes then? These are all DJ mixtapes yeah. uh, and then local DJ tapes as well. Do you have a proper spot to listen to them all? Um, I've got over there. I've got all my blasters. Uh, this is great, man. Well, thanks so much, Avi, and do 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 do. Who are you? Uh, I'm Ed from uh, Framingham, Suffolk. Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Nice to be back. You know, all my schoolmates, uh, I would say 20% of them have now moved to Vancouver. So it's kind of like being back in Fram here. And right off the bat, I want to give you a gift, an Immortal Technique oh, LP. Sick. Amazing. I only had this on CD. What can you say about Immortal Technique? Thank you, Luke. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what, Luke? From oh, Neon Cannon, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so uh, when I was, I basically was a massive fan of a band called Nisloppy, and I just used to follow them around on tour. And then one day they needed a guitar tech, and because I knew all their songs, I guitar tech for them. And yeah, then they had uh, he introduced me to Immortal Technique on on CD. I think he gave me Revolutionary Volume Two, and then their opening act was a guy called Jimmy Davis, who got me Volume One. And then they took me to see him at the. Uh, Coronet Theatre in Elephant and Castle and then I did SNL back in 2014 and the guy that did all my programming, Torre, um, produced half these songs so I actually ended up getting to spend quite a bit of time with Immortal Technique. Oh, what an amazing connection! Yeah, yeah, it was quite quite, quite weird and then I got to interview, uh, I got to introduce uh, Immortal Technique to Jimmy Davis who I was originally on tour with and then they were in touch but yeah, it's pretty cool. In our last interview, uh, no problem, I mentioned Philip. Yeah. Philip Boo? Buta, yeah. Buta, and he sent me the book wow. that he did with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. What can you see about the book that Philip did with you? So, Philip had drawn, Philip drew my... Uh, you can see I've indicated yeah, yeah, with yeah. different places you can open to. Um, Philip drew my album cover uh, for Plus and also did the Multiply stuff. So, he wanted to do a book of his drawings. And then I got interviewed for the book. And then it sort of turned into, like, I guess... Not an autobiography, because it's not an autobiography, but it's like stories amongst the pictures. Does that make sense? The stories around the pictures. But yeah, so that's what this is. But that's great. But I think it's great. I met him through interviewing you, and he yeah. mailed me the book. Thank you, Ed. Yeah, of course, man. Because I talked to you. He ma That was really nice of him, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, super, super nice. Do you have any of his earlier artwork, like he did like bookmarks, et cetera? Do you have any early Philip? Yeah, probably somewhere. Probably somewhere. I think he's got the original plus plus drawing he actually the final my uh, friend Jamal who died last l last year that I had a birthday gift that arrived three months after his death that was a painting of me with an SBTV mic from Philip so it was sort of it was a really like nice comforting thing to get a present from your friend that had passed away like months after he put does that make sense it was it, it, it was sweet so I've got that in my uh, office at home his drawings are amazing aren't they yeah thank you Elizabeth she helped with your Inglewood journey. Oh, yeah. How the hell do you know about Ian Marto? <laughs> well, you're Ed Sheeran. We have to know. Have you been in touch with her? Please tell us about the Inglewood journey. So, uh, Elizabeth, well, I knew her, uh, yeah, I knew her as her stage name, which was Ian Marto, and she was on a, a poetry circuit that I used to play on. Um, and I was sort of saying that I'd want to go to Los Angeles to, like, meet industry people because no one was really interested in my music in in england and she said oh well i've got a friend called john that runs uh, a show out there um which you know did poetry but also also music and the night is in inglewood uh at you probably know better than me what what was the what was the event it's on youtube but anyway i i got there and i had a rucksack full of cds it was my first day and i didn't know how well it was going to go 
and it went super well and it, that ended up funding my entire trip there but yeah she uh, she hooked that all up do you remember an early gig where you played Exeter to like no people yeah, actually, most of the times I played Exeter was to know people. I kind of have, like, I feel like Exeter, I should go back and form good memories there, but no one ever came to watch me in Ex Exeter. But yeah, I remember going there, and the I remember the train ticket cost more than I was getting for the gig, but I was like, I'll make something back on CDs. And then when I was playing, uh, just about to play, there was no one in the room, so I asked the sound guy, can we wait? And he was like, yeah, so we waited a bit more. And then there was no one, and then we waited a bit more, and then he was like, you might as well play. So I played to the sound guy, and then I missed my train, and uh, slept at the train station and got a train in the morning. And I would like to ask you and say thank you, DJ Scholar. Oh, yeah, my God, yeah. I love grime. Scholar actually just passed away, man. Um, really, really rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Um, so DJ Scholar, um, so that's Mad Side 2, mixed by Cyan Anderson. That's, she's a really good friend of mine. And Spyro did the Take Me Back to London remix. Wow. Uh, so Scholar, when I was uh, 15, I was on MySpace, and I just basically blanket messaged all these people in the the grime scene and scholar was part of a rap group called um rough squad which tinchy strider was the sort of like uh guy from that people knew at that time and i i emailed um myspace messaged all of rough squad and just said if anyone wants to do a song i'm here and scholar emailed me back and we would send he would send me beats and i would vocal them terribly in my room and send them back and then one of them ended up on a rapper called slicks who's from rough squad his mixtape in 2006 called down volume two i think it was called um and i just remember being like 15 years old at school and being like I'm on Slicks from Rough Squad's mixtape, and yeah, so uh, I actually got to hang, hang out with um, Scholar and, and Slicks. I went to uh, college in Bromley by Bo, and they both lived in Bo, so I got to hang out with them when, when I went there. But this is this is Matt. And track number 20, I Love Grime. You made it. Where, where, where? Oh, I did. Oh, I did. And Sharon featuring Jeremy. Amazing. Sir Spyro remix. I need to listen to that. I don't think I've heard the Sir Spyro remix. Wow. I'm, quote, your typical average teen. If you know what I mean. I.K. Tom's Nights. Yeah, Ick Tom's. Internet killed the open mic star. Yeah. In Camden. In Ca well, that was where the first one was, but there was uh, a couple. There was one at the Cross Kings in King's Cross. And I actually see Kevin that runs runs at night. He works for um, uh, uh, Global um, now. But he, yeah, he ran these nights. That was my first gig in London, when I, again, when I was 15. And it was through... Gary Dunn was opening up for Nisloppy and he'd basically uh, got a gig at Ick, this Ick Tom's Internet Kill the Open Mic star and I got a gig on there and then there was like Ick Tom's Festivals and that was my first tour going on with like six different singer-songwriters in a, in a van going up the country. Uh, yeah, that was like the, ground, the groundwork of everything that it, there is now. Vanilla Kick. Yeah, that was a band that, well, this is random. I still see, so Harry, uh, for the drummer from um, Vanilla Kick, uh, does photography now. He did some photos for um, my uh, Equals album. There's one of me in a field with a butterfly and stuff. But they were a band from my area. They went to Hartismere High School. They're going to buzz when they see this, actually, Callum. Nice one. Um, <laughs> and they went to Hartismere High School. I went to Thomas Mills High School, and we used to do gigs together. Now, speaking of photos, what exactly is going on here? The Maverick Fest. You on a truck. Yeah, yeah. Playing to no one. <laughs> yeah, that was a... Uh, uh, I love the star. <laughs> that was a, I think that was at Eastern Farm Park. Um, there were obviously people watching, otherwise no one would have taken a video of it. But yeah, that was a, that was a gig at Eastern Farm Park. And I played, I guess, like five people came you I look kind of lonely like on the long shot yeah i mean well i kind of have played like this for 18 years with you know solo with a pedal actually if you come to the show tonight i've got a band for a bit of it but yeah that was uh so there's five people watching there yeah well you can't you got five at least probably yeah I'm and how many tonight uh how many's bc place 60 six hey by the way let's see a bit of an increase yeah a bit of an increase but the same equipment right uh, the pedal's a bit different. I've bet I've made a custom pedal now that's like my own thing. I mean, I didn't make it. Uh, there was a much cleverer person than me that, that made it. But yeah, and the PA system's a little bit different. And obviously the stage now rotates and has lights on it, and there's fireworks. But yeah, other than that, exactly the same. Underline the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were a band in Ipswich that I used to play uh, at the Steamboat in Ipswich constantly with, um, and they were fantastic. 
Yeah. High grade, a producer. Yeah. Yeah, he was from Ipswich as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd you find all this stuff? Well, you're Ed Sheeran. We have to find stuff. Is it, is it in the book? We have to find stuff. You're Ed Sheeran. I love this. I've missed you. Vanilla Ice rap game. Have you played that? No, I haven't. No. I have to, that's amazing though, isn't it? Yeah. So, did Kodak Black really give you a chain? No, he I, he put his chain on me. Um, yeah, I'd met Kodak a few times, but I was in Miami shooting a music video with J Balvin, and he came to the shoot. He'd actually just been shot, so he was on uh, crutches, and he came and sat for a while, uh, and we talked, and yeah, he put his chain on me, and we took some pictures. Will there be a song? Is it out? There is a song, yeah. So I basically, we did a song together for his album and then the original, ver the original version of the song that I'd been sent was the one that came out. So there is a, there is a version out there. I think he, he's, he's played it on, on Instagram. It's, it's on the internet somewhere. Ed Sheeran, you have a crypt and a chapel and a pub? Yeah. So the crypt thing freaks people out. Like, obviously, like, thinking of your death is a bit morbid. But I just, like, I don't want to get cremated. I, f I find the idea of being burnt a bit weird and I would love, you know, if everyone gets cremated, there's nothing for people to dig up in 2000 years. So I'd love to be buried with things that I liked at the time. And then if ever you're dug up, people would be like, who was this guy? You know? What about the chapel you're, and the you're pub? Buried, you're buried with the microphone and the hat and the glasses. People would be like, who is this guy? They'd be like, oh, it's Nardwa. What about the pub, though? Is there a certain dress code you have to have for the pub? Like, you have your own pub. Yeah. You have to wear a jacket? Like, if I came to your house, yeah, yeah, I have yeah. to wear a jacket? How does that work? There's, well, it, it was, uh, when I was last on tour, I lived in a house with all my mates, and we watched a lot of Sons of Anarchy, so I was like, I should just get jackets made for the pub. So we got jackets made for the pub, and I got a little gavel and a, a table carved like Sons of Anarchy, and there's also a box of wigs, so you could put on wigs if you were there. I got bought a box of wigs by my friend Casey, and so yeah, jackets and wigs. So Ed, I did I love this. You've oh. just got you've just, you've got everything and just these Justin Bieber stickers and and Hannah Montana and that just chocolate, cool and Limp Biscuit still sucks. <laughs> cool. Great promo items, eh? Really good. I love that Limp. These are Limp Biscuit items. That's great. Cool. Is there a large collection of Ed Sheeran type stuff? Like, could this be, like, in another world, an Ed Sheeran collection of stuff? I think if you went back over the last ten years, yeah, because there have been there have been different things. There have been like, I think we did like a Monopoly board at some point, and you know, obviously the Funko Pops, and we've done chocolates and beers, and there's lots of different promotional items. That I bet you there's a fan out there that has got everything. My dad's got quite a good collection of stuff. He sort of tries to get everything. You introduced your dad to Paul McCartney. I did, yeah, I did. And you got Paul McCartney to sign a Hofner bass. Yeah, yeah, it was... Uh, Where'd you get that? I just bought it from a music store in, in LA. I didn't think I'd ever see him again. It was one, of, I've actually stopped having, there was basically like a year of my career when plus where Anyone that I met that I loved, I got them to sign things to put in my pub at home because I was like, this will be the only year that I'm having hits and this will be the only time I've... But now, like, it's a bit awkward because now I bump into the people that I didn't think I'd see again back then. And, like, I don't know. You know, like, when you've asked someone to sign something, there's, like, you're instantly on a they asked me to sign thing level. Does that make sense? I think so sometimes... I stopped asking for pictures and autographs at some point, and now I'm friends with people. April 3rd, 2007. Yes. The horrors. Wow. <laughs> I was street teamed for the horrors at uh, um, Waterfront, Norwich. I used to be a street teamer. That's how I used to get free gig tickets. Is There was a company called Wild UK. And they uh, basically would send you badges and a sheet to get people's email addresses, like pre-Twitter and all of this stuff. And I would go up and down a queue and be like, if you give me your email address, I'll give you a badge. And then I'd get free tickets to the gig for doing that. But yeah, I did that for lots of people. Have you ever told them the horror sand? No, no, I've never met. I've never met any any of the horrors. I uh, I, I got good friends with uh, Example, who was opening up for Plan B at the time of me street teaming for Plan B. But who else did I street team for that I've seen since? Um, Image and Heap. I don't know, really. Amazing to have Ed Sheeran on the street team. Did you do a good job? I mean, I got lots of emails. Yeah, I got lots of emails, but it was more like. 
It, you got stuff like this. You know, you would be sent some cool sort of merch item and then a bag of uh, badges, and then the badges would be, yeah, I'd get like you know seven inch singles and blah 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 from from the street team. Stu, did you work with Wild UK? No, we used X Taste. Oh, Wild, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to, yeah, a long time before you were born. Yeah. Actually, Ed, could you please, it, who do we have in a room? It's my manager, Stuart. <laughs> hey, uh, so Stuart uh, used to work for Atlantic Records, who I was signed to, and then he uh, basically, yeah, all the bands that I would have street team for, you probably would have done, right? I mean, Plan B, pl Plan B was technically Atlantic, right? Yeah. And there we go, Ed Sheeran on the street team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I, you know, I've always been a music fan, and that was like the easiest way to get free gig tickets was to work for well i say work I, I didn't get paid i got paid in seven inch vinyls and cd singles and you love movies like sophie's choice wow uh heavy film heavy film uh yeah i like movies a lot i like i'd say my my only hobby really is music but i'd say if i had to pick another hobby i'd say it's movie watching or re i like reading the books of the movies and then watching the movies i'm reading jurassic park at the moment you done that well, I'm thinking of like Jurassic Park, like huge trees, and I'm thinking of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and I'm thinking of Beat Street Records, and lastly, Passenger, Passenger. Yeah, yeah, Passenger. Is on Network Records from Vancouver. Network from Vancouver. I didn't know Network. The Canadian Connection. They're coming in. Mate, Canada has great music. Really, really good music. And you have the Canada tattoo somewhere. Uh, yeah. Did I have that when I saw you? No, you didn't. Got that at the Much Music Awards 2012. I was definitely on tour with Snow Patrol then as well. Well, thanks so much, Ed Sheeran. Anything else you want to add to the people out there at all? Uh, I really appreciate you having me back on. I sort of thought it was like a one-time only thing when I did it. And then, like, the more that my career has gone on, I was, I've been like, oh, I'd really love to do Nardwar again. Because obviously there's more stuff that's happened. And, yeah, it's kind of you take me down a trip down memory lane and it's fun. Well, I'm honored that you said that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you. Ed, why should people care about Ed Sheeran? Why should people care? Uh, only if you like the music, really. I mean, yeah, if you like the music, then care. And if you don't like the music, like someone else's music. I'm sort of, there's enough music to go around, I think. Well, thanks so much, Ed Sheeran. Keep on rocking in a free world and do, 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 do. I did this wrong last time. Do, do. Yeah. And then there we go. And let's see. Okay, so it's 10 to 4 now. Let's see if we can stand there for 10 minutes. It's going to be harder for him. He's got the stance going on. He's going to be getting cramps in those legs right now. But I reckon you do squats and hardware, so I think you're good. What's the longest one of these do you think you've done? I reckon we can do 10. Does he blink? <laughs> he doesn't blink. <laughs> God. It's like one of those things that like stops being funny and then starts being funny again and then stops being funny and then starts being funny. <laughs> it's amazing. 